Okay. Well, everybody, I wanted to uh, say good afternoon, and I'd like to thank Mr. Reed and everybody at Hampshire High School for giving us the opportunity to shoot this little video here. Um, my name is Martin Matushik. I'm with a company called M Squared Polymer Technologies, and we're experts in superabsorbent chemistry, which is based on acrylic acid. Um, how many of you kids know what a polymer is? Can someone tell me? <laughs> okay. <laughs> this polymer is typically a big molecule made of a lot of small molecules. If I have like a pearl and I start stringing all these pearls together like this, this long strand is called a polymer. And polymers, there can be straight ones, there can be branched ones, circular ones, but that's basically what we're talking about is you take a little piece and you make something bigger out of it repeating units. And what I've got here is this is a little ball, if you can see it, it's just four millimeters. This is a, a little sphere of acrylic acid. And what you've got in your hand there is 99% acrylic acid and 1% water. And what's really amazing about this is if I take that same little sphere and I soak it for a couple of hours, I get a ball that's about two centimeters in size. What I got now in my hand is 99% water, 1% acrylic acid. Nothing changed, it just absorbed it. You ever seen water bounce? Oh. 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 Here, pass a couple of these around. <laughs> so here again, from a closer angle, is a uh, demonstration of this is a tiny super absorbent sphere. It's four millimeters in diameter and I've got 99% acrylic acid and 1% water in my hand. And if I take this same sphere and I soak it for a couple of hours, it swells into this. And what I'm holding now is 99% water and 1% acrylic acid. And it's opened up just like a cage. These are all non-flammable, non-toxic. Non Oh, where, where does all of this stuff start? Well, we all start, this is a petrochemical. These are all made from a barrel of crude oil or from natural gas. And it starts with a molecule. It's got three carbon units in it. And it's got what they call an unsaturated group in it, which makes it really nicely reactive. And what people do with this propylene molecule, it's a gas, is they react it with oxygen. Okay? And they then form something, it's a monomer, the monomer we're talking about today. <laughs> it's like jello. This is the monomer. It's acrylic acid. Acrylic acid, it's got two very interesting groups that allow it to do some pretty cool things that we'll talk about. But there, this is what's called a carboxylic acid function, and this is an unsaturated alkene group, which makes it really nicely reactive. And so what you do is I take my acrylic acid and I start polymerizing it. Well, put the, put the um, eraser. eraser back in the middle. What do I do? The eraser, eraser goes in, right in the middle. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm still a chalk guy. Uh, okay. So basically, I'm going to take that acrylic acid. And we start linking them together. We have this C. So that's one unit, and then it reacts with another one. Acrylic 
chemistry has been around for, for decades. And it wasn't really until the 1980s that it was applied to superabsorbents. One of the first things that acrylic molecules were used for was in, in laundry detergents. Is for years before you kids were even born, they used phosphates to um, build what they call detergent builders and laundry detergents. And you know what eutrophication is? No? Mm -hmm. Eutrophication was something that was happening in a lot of our lakes and streams because there was so much phosphate going into the ecosystem from people washing their clothes. It was making these huge algae blooms. The people, the reason people put phosphates in detergents for years is because the elements in our water, magnesium and calcium, that make water hard, you want to tie those up so that the other things in your laundry detergent get the clothes clean. And so what they figured out is the uh, acrylic molecules, if I have magnesium, oops, which is a plus two balance, this carboxylic acid group will bind the magnesium. So it's not floating around in, in, in the water anymore so that the surfactants and the other things in a laundry detergent or a soap work better. And this stuff doesn't hurt the ecosystem. So that was one of the first things people figured out. One of the other interesting things that these acrylic molecules are used for are thickeners. What's really kind of bizarre about acrylic acid is when you make this polymer chain, when it's in a dry state, it's not a string, uh, straight piece like a piece of spaghetti. It's really curled up, kind of like a pigtail, like this. Okay? You guys, have you learned about hydrogen bonding in chemistry yet? Oh, yeah. And how, what a powerful effect that can be? So if I put this stuff, this, this pigtail in water, and I've got all of this stuff going on here, and I have these crazy little carboxylic acid groups here. What happens is this pigtail straightens out like that. And when I take something and I stretch it out like that, what happens is it becomes a thickening agent. And so you've seen this kind of like hair gel. Okay, what I'm squirting out here is about 98% water. And by using just like one-fourth of one percent of a molecule like this, I can take water and I can turn it into a clear gel. So what somebody figured out a long time ago, okay, what am I doing wrong here, Derek? Okay. What somebody figured out a long time uh, ago to do was to take these curly fuel mo molecules and add what they call a cross-linking agent to it. And cross-linking agents are like little, little organic molecules, but they form like little bridges on a ladder. And so what happens in a super absorbent, like, like one of these, okay. is <laughs> <laughs> what, what you form now is kind of a lattice of connected polymer chains. And so what happens is water wants to get inside this network of polymer chains. And have you ever seen one of these? This is called the Oberman sphere. But what happens is there's what they call a diffusion gradient that's built in this molecule. And so the water wants to get in, and so all these polymer chains kind of go like this. And that's really what's going on in your little in your little buckyball there. <laughs> so um, let me see. The other thing I wanted to talk about just briefly is the uh, importance of the cross-linking agents in this process is I brought with me several different superabsorbent chemicals that, that we make. Oops. And uh, by varying the cross-linking agent, I can get these, these molecules to do all kinds of cool things. Like this is a superabsorbent we sell for medical waste, okay? And this polymer, when I add it to the water, it's going to solidify virtually immediately. I mean, it's under 10 seconds, and it's gone. Whoa. The other one, this is a product we actually sell a lot for this radioactive waste application. This is going to take about 60 seconds or so to solidify. And the reason we want it to solidify slower is so that any free liquid can wick, can move around and get access to the different absorbent particles. So I add this one. 
and it's going to sit for a little bit. And then finally, we have a product. Most super absorbents don't expand in volume. This one actually grows. And we actually sell this as an artificial snow material. This is acrylic acid, and it's based on the choice of the cross-linking agents that are used. Here again is a close-up uh, on the demonstration of the importance of the cross-linking agent. I can take all three of these products are pure polyacrylate superabsorbent, but by varying the cross-linking agent, I can produce a polymer that will solidify almost immediately in less than 10 seconds. Whereas I can take another polymer with a different cross-linking agent and produce a product that will actually take 45 to 60 seconds to solidify. And then finally, I can vary the cross-linking agent again and produce a product that will actually expand in volume when it contracts with water. and it looks like artificial snow. So this was immediate. This was done in about oh, 30 or 40 seconds, and this one expands. So anyway, I wanted to thank Mr. Reed again for uh, allowing me to do this little demonstration, and uh, if you'd like to see any more about our products or about the history of superabsorbent chemistry, you can go to our website, which is www.m2polymer.com. Thank you.